up YouTube welcome back to the channel again uh, it is a gorgeous day so I got lucky uh, looks like I'm all by myself the kids are gone and with their mom and I don't have any responsibilities right now so I can go and have a little fun uh, I think I'm gonna go over to my storage and just uh, hang out for a little bit um, I got a few things I need to tidy up over there a few things I need to check on uh, so what I'll do is uh, I'll bring you guys along with me you know, we'll, 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 we'll talk about uh, a couple of the cars over there. I, may, I think I may do a little walk around on either the Cutlass or the Impala because right now the, the C10 is here at the house, of course. And then there's there's the Benz. But uh, I think at the storage, I've got the Impala and the Cutlass and then, of course, the Monte Carlo's in the shop. So I won't be able to talk about that. But um, anyways, yeah, so I'll, um, you know, I'll shoot some video over there, let you guys kind of see what's going on in the storage. Um, and uh, kind of give you a sneak peek into what I'm working on, okay? I'll see you guys in a minute. Oh, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, uh, like the video, share it with a friend, uh, and if you if you do so, feel inclined, hit that uh, notification bell as, as well so you'll be updated on all the new videos that I post. I'll be posting new videos at least once a day or if not every other day, so um, if, you, if you see me miss a day, don't worry. I, I definitely will post one the day after that, so uh, I'm gonna keep this content coming. And I hope you guys enjoy it. If you don't like it, you know, let me know in the comments. If you do like it, of course, let me know as well. But uh, I want to hear from you. Let me know what uh, what's working, what's not working. If you know, if you want to see more of this or less of that, you know, I'm open to those suggestions. I'm trying to make this and tailor it to uh, your viewer, uh, you know, likes and and uh, and preferences. So uh, just let me know what you want to see, and I'll try to make it happen. Thanks. All right, guys, I'm here at the storage. Get this bad boy unlocked. I really like this storage because it's got it's got these huge roll-up doors that are like they're like 15 feet, 15 feet roll-up doors. So you can fit just about anything in here. So this is actually this is actually storage uh, number. This is storage number one. It's the main storage, but I also have um, a second storage, kind of like a backup storage that I use kind of as a as an overflow. Yeah, I need I need that extra space uh, for like some of this stuff that I can't fit in this storage because you know this storage, as you can see, pretty much is already kind of maxed out. But um, that other storage, I'll, I'll take you guys over until so we can take a look at that other storage so you can see what's in there. Uh, it doesn't have quite as much stuff, but it's got, you know, it's got stuff in it that I, that I need to, you know, put away for safekeeping. So I'll show you what's over there at, the other, at that other storage. I, I think y'all, y'all have seen this storage before. It's not the first time I've recorded video in here, but, um, yeah, this is where, like they say in, on MTV Cribs, this is where all the magic happens. But yeah, anyway, so, uh, so my, my 71 Cutlass, guys, um, what can I say about it? So. 71 Cutlass um, is uh, is a favorite of mine. Uh, a lot you guys don't know this obviously because you don't know me that well. But I have a, I had an uncle that passed away uh, years some years ago. Uh, my father's brother, un Uncle Lou, and uh, or Uncle Magellan as we call him sometimes. Uh, uncle Magellan had a he had a 71 Oldsmobile Cutlass, but his was a, what they call a Cutlass S, or sometimes people refer to it as a fastback. And the, the the fastback cutlass is the one that kind of it kind of looks like a Chevelle. It has that kind of similar shape. But but Uncle Lou had a had a seventy one Chevelle. Excuse me, seventy one cutlass that was red with black stripes. And you know I always loved that car. And I always said you know that whenever I got an opportunity, I'm I'm gonna buy me a car like that. You know what I mean? And I, and actually I, I wanted to buy his, but I just be completely honest, I didn't have the money for it at the time. He was trying to sell it because he. He started getting sick and he needed to, uh, you know, come up with some capital to pay bills and whatnot, medicine and all that stuff. And so he, he had to sell it. And I, I wanted the car bad, man. I just didn't have what he was asking for. And he, he actually wasn't asking much for the car at all. I think he was asking like 13 grand. And, um, but I just, I didn't have it. So the car went to somebody else, you know, and it really just broke my heart to see the car go to someone else and leave the family. But, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. So anyways, so that's what happened. So he, after that car was gone, I, like I said, I told myself, man, whenever I am able to, 
I will buy me uh, a cutlass and I will paint it just like Uncle Lou's car was, just kind of in his memory, you know, in honor of him and in his memory. So that's what I did. I bought this car. I bought it in uh, 2000, I think 14. Uh, I think I, I think it was delivered to me on Valentine's Day. I uh, uh, the car was green when I bought it. It was like a booger green with with booger green interior. Like the color outside matched the color inside. In, in my opinion, it just it wasn't really the color that I wanted. I always I always knew I wanted a red and black uh, Cutlass. Uh, so it wasn't even a question when I got that thing I, that I was gonna paint it. But anyways, I, I I drove it like that for a while until I, I decided to do the interior. Then I was trying to decide on whether or not I wanted to paint the car black and red, you know, black with red stripes, or if I want to do red with black stripes. And so I told myself, I said, I said, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do the interior, right? And then depending on how the interior comes out, that'll kind of help me decide on what I want to do as far as the paint. So I, I went and got the interior done. Car was still green. I went and got the interior done. They swapped it out, made the interior like it is now, black with the red stitching and all the piping and whatnot. And uh, I just, I fell in love with it. And I was like, you know, when I saw the car with the interior, it, it was like instantly, I just knew like, this car has to be, it has to be red. There's just no way around it. There's, there's no other color that it can be but red. So there you have it. I ended up painting it red. Uh, got, got the car completely redone. All the, the interior shop that did the car was a shop here in Houston called Pablo's Upholstery, real small mom and pop shop, uh, but they do really good work. And um, that, they, they did the interior and then um, shop out of Dallas, uh, Caddy's Customs, they did all the paint and body work. And what they did was a complete, a complete swap of the whole front clip. So everything you see in front of you, uh, the, the hood, both the fenders, um, the bumper, the grill, uh, the housings around the headlights, uh, the grill housing, pretty much that whole entire front clip was changed. The only thing that they didn't change on this car was uh, the radiator core support is, is the is same. Um, the fender, fender wells are, are the same. Of course, the firewall and all that stuff is the same. But hood, fenders, and the, pretty much the whole front clip has been replaced on this car. Uh, they also... Um, they also replaced about 30% of the quarter panels because this car had rust in the quarter panels, so they had to replace those. Uh, and like I said, the fenders were replaced. The fenders probably could have been saved. They could have just, they probably could have just patched them. But I was like, you know what? If, if we're gonna do it, let's just do it all the way. So I ended up having them go ahead and uh, we just ended up replacing all the fenders as well. So we had brand new metal. So pro probably about, I'd say 50% of the car is new metal. The trunk, the trunk deck, trunk lid is the same. The hood is original. I'm mean, sorry, the, the doors are original. The trunk is original. Uh, and then like I said, everything else has been changed, you know. Even the mirrors, even the mirrors are new. Well, not, they're not new, but I, I ordered them from somebody who refurbishes them. Um, so the car, the car has gone through quite a bit of work. I didn't take this car off the frame. Uh, because it didn't really need it. The car was in really good shape. It was a, a two-owner car. It had 34,000 original miles on it, and it was super clean. Uh, and, uh, you know, and by the way, this is, a, this is an all numbers matching vehicle, meaning that it, all the numbers match, meaning the, the engine and transmission are original to this car and have never been removed or never been swapped or anything like that. So this car is all original from a standpoint of the original drivetrain, transmission, and, and engine. So anyways... And then uh, the rest of the car was, was was taken care of by just different shops, you know, performance stuff here and there, mo you know, modifications here and there. But for the most part, the bulk, bulk of the work was done at Caddy's Customs and, um, and uh, Pablo's Upholstery. So, so the wheels on this car, this is a 2022. So that's a 20-inch wheel in the front. That's a 22-inch wheel in the rear. I think the spec on the wheel in the rear is a 22 by either 10 and a half or 22 by 11 if i'm not mistaken i can't i can't recall exactly but i think it has a a five five inch lip or maybe a five and a half inch lip and i think this wheel in the front is like a 20 by eight and a half i believe uh because i think there's like a two inch difference between the front and the rear wheel as far as the width uh width and diameter actually because it's a 2022 but i i really like this look uh i used to have 24s on the car 
and the car was, you know, it had a nice, it had a, it had a nice little stance to it. It was kind of squatted. I had the rear end kind of squatted down a little bit over the wheels, and the front was kind of, kind of raised up just a little bit, so it kind of had a nice little, what they call a rake to it, um, which was cool for a while. You know, I rode it like that for a couple years, and then I just, I, honestly, I, you know, I just, at one point, I just said, you know what, I don't, I don't know if I really want that look anymore, so I decided to go with more of a, what I would consider like more of a performance look, um, more of a muscle car look with the 2022 and kind of sit it down in the front, let it kind of lean forward a little bit instead of leaning backwards. And uh, that's that's the look that I, I like. And, and when I did that, man, I tell you, it completely changed the um, the personality and the look of the car. I mean, it just completely changed it. Completely changed it. I, I, I really like how that back wheel sits sits off in there, how it tucks off in there, and that the wheel wheel. That's a gorgeous looking wheel. I, I, I like this wheel, you know, this, it's like a, just a simple five spoke design. You know, it doesn't have to be too fancy, too, you know, keep it simple. Um, and that, that little five spoke design is like a classic design that, that never really gets old, you know what I mean? It's perfect on like a muscle car, so, and that's why I chose it, so. Um, um, I put this car in, in, I put it in several car shows, but the, but the shows that I'm most proud of are um, the um, the Houston. It's called the Houston Autorama. I put it in the Houston Autorama, which is like a, a a pretty a nationally known car show that travels from city to city over like an eight or nine month period, and they come through Houston every year around November. And um, I uh, so I showed the car in in the Autorama. In, in the show is inside. It's an inside show at the convention center at the george o'brien convention center so i showed the car for the first time in 2015 car had 24s on it at the time and uh it got it got really good reviews and people really liked it but i ended up getting fourth place in my class which wasn't bad considering the competition there was some pretty stiff competition there so um what i did was i talked to the to the, the, the scoring judge and because when they when they judge your car at shows like that like those real big shows like they have like a very formal process that they that they judge your car. They actually have a each judge has a scoring card that they mark notes on for your car when they judge it. And then and then they at the end of the day they collect those cards and then you can go and take a look at what they marked off on or what they gave you points for, what they took off points for, or what have you. So when I found out what I what they took off for, basically it was my engine bay. That was that was what it was that, that kind of kept me from getting higher a higher uh, 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 place. So. So, so I went back to the drawing board. So that, that year, I, I said, I'm going to go back in 2016, but I'm going to go back with a different engine bay. And, and some guys told me, some old school cats was like, man, you got to get, in order to win those shows, man, you got to you gotta get some chrome. It's like chrome, you know, chrome wins trophies. Uh, so I ended up adding a whole uh, chrome dress-up kit in the car. Uh, you can, it's, the car is dusty right now, so it, it's probably not the best time to, to look at it with all the dust but I, as you can see i got the chrome valve covers i got the chrome uh breather also put um also put that uh no, it's not it's not chrome but it's like that aluminum polished or stainless aluminum whatever finish intake i put that in there just to dress it up and make it look a little pretty you know when it was when it was fresh and brand new man that, that engine bay was gleaming but right now unfortunately it's all dusty and dirty i got i gotta get in there and detail that thing man it's it's uh it's uh, a long overdue for a full, thorough detail. Um, so I got this guy who does, who does a real good job. He calls himself a master detailer. What he does is he, he books appointments. He does only one car a day. So, so he'll devote his entire day, eight hours or whatever it is, just on your car. He's expensive. It costs, it costs like probably two or 300 bucks to have it done. But when, when your car leaves, your car is just like, it's amazing how clean it is, how, how well he details a car. So I, I, I may need to have him do that for me again because um, it's, it's long overdue. It's long overdue. And, um, but anyways, guys, you know, this is my baby. You know, I, I'll be getting some more footage. I, I'm, I think what I'm going to end up having to do is I'll probably have to have to bring hire somebody or add somebody or bring somebody along as a cameraman so I can take some rolling shots of these cars and, you know, do some stuff that's really cool so I can post it to the channel. Um, cause like me by myself and me kind of handling my camera, I can't do a lot of that stuff by myself. I got to have a second person to do it. So I'm going to, I'm going to probably try to, uh, try to get somebody to, to do some professional, 
rolling shots so I can post them to the page. You know, maybe somebody can spend a day with me over here at the shop. You know, we can go through the cars. I'll pull them out. You know, they can do some real nice, you know, cinematic type quality footage. And, you know, and I can post it on the page and share it with you guys, man. Because that's, that's, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I want to give you guys good quality content. And, um, and you know, that's what's up. So, but, but yeah, that's my baby. Uh, that thing over there, I think I talked about that already in my other video, but that is a 6 0 that came out of a, a Yukon Denali. 6 0, 6 .0 liter uh, LS engine that came out of a, uh, a, a, G a GMC Yukon. So, um, that thing right there is most likely going to go in my uh, 87 SS Monte Carlo. Um, I got to take it and have it cleaned up and, and have it, you know, w looked at and opened up, make sure there's no internal issues with the engine. But um, that will definitely be in one of my cars at some point in the near future. And here's my little baby, my little, uh, my dune buggy. It's a uh, Polaris razor 1000 so this is this is basically like a a thousand cc motorcycle engine basically uh strapped on the back of a goat cart it's pretty much what it is and it's nasty as hell right now because i take it in the mud and it's uh you know there's a there's a uh there's some vacant land not too far from here where me and a group of guys we we all go riding and uh it's, it's a bad little bad little little whip man it's a lot of fun i mean you see the dash, the dash says, uh, what's it say, 120? Now, I have never and I never will go faster than probably 60 miles an hour in this thing because this thing gets pretty, pretty squirrely once you get over about 50 miles an hour. I would not recommend driving that fast in this thing on like an uneven surface like a gravel road or uh, you know, just a dirt road or something like that or just a, even an open field. Cause it's so much that can go wrong with this thing in a situation like that. But I, I, I got it up to about 60 on a, on a paved road with like no other traffic. It was just me by myself. So that, so I, you know, I, I felt a little, a little more comfortable doing it on that. You know what I mean? Of course I had my seatbelt on. I mean, this, this thing is like, just like a car. I mean, it's got, you know, headlights, it's got tail lights. You know, I, I added the side view mirrors. I uh, don't have signal lights on this thing, but they do have a kit where you can you can make it a ha make it have signal lights. I got it. I got a rear view mirror to see what's behind me. You know, it's got it's got a, a gear shift, forward, reverse, neutral, park, steering wheel just like a car, instrument cluster like a car. Tells you all the information you can know about the car. Headlight switches. Uh, then this thing here is pretty cool. This uh, this roof. Yeah, this uh, this roof. It has an integrated uh, LED lights in the front. Those really, really bright, bright like uh, high high beam lights. Uh, and then on the back, it's got the same thing. It's got one individual light in the back, and then it's got it's got two six by nines, and then it's got uh, it's got two six by nines under here also. And it's it's pretty loud. It's pretty loud. Um, I, when I ride, I, I have I have it up pretty loud. This this thing has a dome light back here. I mean, it's a sweet little setup. It's this thing is you know it's fully equipped for whatever whatever you need out there when you're out there riding the trails and you know getting muddy and whatnot, getting dirty. But uh, I really enjoyed it. I've had it for about two or three years now, and uh, I got I got some wheels for it. These wheels here, are, um, what are these? These are. These are what, these are 14 inch rims, which is it's a, it's a 29 inch tire. So the overall diameter of the tire is 29 inches. But if you look up there on the shelf right there, those four big tractor looking tires, those are, those are 30, 35 inch tires on 20 inch wheels. So I, I, I bought those for this thing here to put them on here, but I hadn't, uh, haven't had a chance to do it because I need to, I need to put a lift kit on this thing and then I also need to do a few other things. I, I need to get to put a clutch kit in here um, and a few of the little minor things that I need to prepare it for those wheels when it, when it comes time to uh, put those on. Yeah. So up, up there, so that, that whole shelf, I call it a shelf, but it also, it could be kind of, it's kind of like a loft or whatever, if you will. 
I built that damn thing by myself. And I, I had to lift, I had to build that whole deck and lift it up myself, literally by myself, and then nail it into place and wedge those, uh, those four by four posts under it to get it to stand up by itself. Talk about a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, I did that myself. Then, then I built all these, I built all these shelves in here. Cause this place was pretty much bare when I, when I moved in. I built these shelves in here so I can have more storage space, which comes in handy because at some point I ran out of room with so much stuff in here. And then my little, my little uh, deck up there, upper deck, it, it ran out of room pretty quick. So I had to find other ways to get stuff off the floor, you know what I mean? So I can make room for the cars. In case you're wondering, uh, this, this is a 20, 20 by 45. I pay three, 25 a month for this space which isn't too bad considering it when you do the math on the square footage that's not really bad for the amount of square footage that i have in here um the other storage is much smaller it's an 11 by 30 i only pay like 140 a month for that storage so um you know it um it but it serves its purpose you know obviously i if i had my choice i would rather have all my stuff at my house and you know not have to deal with paying for storage but unfortunately I only have a two-car garage, um, and you know there's no way I'm going to have my cars parked e either in the driveway or on the curb or whatever. So I had to, you know, I had to do what I had to do to make sure that uh, my stuff was secure. So eventually, at some point, um, maybe the next year or so, I looked, I looked to build a house with uh, with either some land so I can put up a metal storage building, I can store all my stuff there, or uh, I'm going to look at something like a six-car garage with lifts in it so I can stack up my cars and fit, you know, fit like seven, eight cars in the garage and not have to worry about a storage. So uh, anyways, uh, I'm gonna head over to this other storage. I'll see you guys in a minute, all right? All right, guys, over here at, this, at the other storage. Get this thing locked. See them two big old, big old padlocks, huh? Yeah. Taking, no, taking no risks, taking no losses. Two of these bad boys on here. smaller right like I said this is 11 this is an 11 by 30 and it uh it, you know it serves a purpose I don't I, I had I, I think at one point in time I did have a car in here I had a I had that uh that donor car the t-top donor car that I used for project t-top I, I had to I had to park it here for a while that, that car was probably here about three months before I moved it uh, so I could have, have the top cut off of it. But this is what I got over here, man. It's just miscellaneous stuff, you know? Um, car parts, basically. There's a door off that Denali. Um, random stuff, like there's a, a driver's side window or a passenger, passenger side, no, it's a driver's side window, I think, for that Monte Carlo, that donor car, and a bunch of mis miscellaneous parts, parts and stuff. Um, there's some exhaust manifolds that came off of a LS. There's some uh, more LS parts. Those are uh, the ignition coils and the brackets. Then that right there, that's those are two uh, two LS engines right there. Both 6 O's. One came off of a Hummer. One came off of a, like a three-quarter ton pickup, heavy-duty Chevy pickup truck. So one of those will go in my C10 and one of those will probably go in my Impala. And there's a seat that came out of that donor car, that Monte Carlo that I had, that I used for uh, for the roof. Uh, that's for sale, by the way, if anybody needs it. Here's some, there's some fender wells, came off that's Monte Carlo, some other little miscellaneous stuff. There's some some speakers and, oh, there's two transmissions too. Those, those are the transmissions that go with those engines over there. Uh, one's a 4L80, which is the one that everybody wants. And the other one is a 4L65, I think. And here's just miscellaneous parts that came off those engines. Fuel pumps, radio, uh, alternator, and stuff like that. 
Yeah, but I'm, I'm really at a point to where I probably can start consolidating most of this stuff and moving it over to the other storage because really and truly, I, I don't... I mean, it's nice to have this space over here, but like most of this stuff is small enough to where I could, I could put it all together in a nice, neat pile and I could find a corner over at that other storage and fit this stuff in here. So really, I'm just really just throwing away 140 bucks a month on this place here. Um, I kind of, I, I'm keeping it because I, I, I feel like at some point there's going to be something else that I need to put over here. But it's been like this probably for the last three, three months at least. And uh, there's, you know, I'm not getting, I'm not getting its full potential or full maximum use out of this space. I'm wasting a lot of space. So I, you know, it's, it's time for me to try to figure out something else. You know, get, like I said, you get rid of some of this stuff, sell it or whatever. Uh, and, and whatever I don't sell, move it over to the other storage and, you know, call it a day. Anyways, guys, that's enough for the storage today. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump off. But, um, I really appreciate you guys. Like I said, if you haven't already, don't forget to do what? Comment, like subscribe hit that notification bell i appreciate your support can't wait to see you again but stay tuned guys i got some more stuff coming for you all right take care bye